Everyone wants a miracle, but no one wants to be put in the crisis that requires a miracle. The only way you really need a miracle is that you have a problem. And the bigger the problem, the bigger the miracle you need. We like miracles, but not the problems that go with them. But sooner or later, it's going to happen to you. The phone is going to ring and your calm, tranquil, well-ordered life is instantly going to be in a raging storm. Sooner or later, you're going to face a crisis beyond your power to control. Our God is a God who wants to perform the miraculous in your life. There are times in our lives where we face something that it just seems like there's no way out. We could do all the math in our mind and our mind will tell us there's nothing that can be done here. Maybe you're in a job and, and, and you know God wants to bless you, but you look at your situation and you think, well, God can't move here. My boss doesn't like me. My, I can't get along with the other people at work. There's, there's such a ceiling in my environment. It's impossible for God to move in this situation. Other times we might say, well, my marriage, Pastor, it's just so bad. It's been so many years that it's been sliding in the wrong direction. I, I don't know that God could ever move our marriage into the position that he keeps talking about. How is God gonna change these things in my life? Pastor, I've been attacked in my body for so long and the diagnosis is that it's incurable. Nothing can be done here. I'm not sure that God could even move. I don't know what he would do. And our brain starts to opt us out of God's best in our lives. It says, well, the impossible things, I don't know that God still does that anymore. We begin to forget the things in our past where God did perform the miraculous. Can you think back to a time when God did something miraculous in your life that no one could explain? Something happened and you got a breakthrough when there seemed to be no way. There was a miracle that happened in your life that could not be explained with the mind. The mind wants to get in your way. It wants to say, well, that's impossible. A lot of people believe in the Bible. They believe in the miracles in the Bible. What they don't believe is that God will do it for them and do it now. That's what faith is, believing that God can do it for you and do it right now. Um, there, we, we, we live in a world where everyone's telling you, you can't pull this off. Um, we live in a time when, when people, even in the church, don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and what He can do. Um, sometimes we just look at the scriptures and go, well, yeah, that was back then. And you guys, it, it, it's, it's not about back then. It's, it's about always. It's about ever since the beginning of this book and all the way to the end, it, the followers of God were filled with courage. There was a fearlessness in them. There was a confidence of, my God will come through. We grew up with these stories. We, we really did. And don't you remember as a kid just having this faith like God can do anything? God loves to work best and shine his glory when things seem the darkest. When the Israelites were in a situation where they're hemmed in by the mountains, they couldn't escape the mountains. They had the sea in front of them, they couldn't swim across that, and the Egyptians were coming in, and God had positioned them there. You'd think, they thought, well, why, 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 what is going on? This is impossible. You know what, even when it looks impossible, God can either blow up the mountains or he can part the sea. He's gonna figure it out. We just have to keep believing that no matter how impossible it looks, God can still do it. I don't know how he's gonna come through in this financial situation, but here's what I do know. I know that my God will meet all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I don't serve a God of the practicals. I serve a God of the miracles. The God of the Bible is a miracle working God. In the genesis of time, he breathed into a handful of dirt and Adam became a living soul. That was a miracle. He separated the day from the night. He flung the glittering stars against the velvet of the night to glisten like diamonds as an eternal reminder to mankind that he is the infinite creator. He set the sun ablaze and placed it in the heavens as his version of the eternal flame. The infinite power of God to create is far beyond our imagination to grasp. 
The God of this Bible is a God of might and miracles. He's a God of grace and glory. He's a God of power and patience. Moses parted the Red Sea and walked across on dry ground with almost two million people. He healed the lame, he healed the deaf, he healed the blind. That, my friend, is miracle working power. We serve a Jesus who walked around making the uncommon events in the power of God look like they were common. Every day he was performing a miracle. You have that same spirit on the inside of you. And it's so rare that someone, even in church gatherings, it's so rare for someone to put their arm around you and remind you of how powerful you are, how powerful your God is who dwells inside of you, and what you can do. You know, we, we, we kind of, we, we become more and more cowardly. He's never been pleased with cowardice. He's never been pleased with people who don't believe that he can come through and that he can do anything. But have we lost the wonder of God? Do we see his might and majesty so often we're blind to its presence? Have you ever watched the sunset or the sunrise? that ball of fire that's glowing on the horizon. It's a staggering miracle that really you can't wrap your mind around. Why should you know this? Because on creation morning, a divine spark of glory escaped from the fingertip of Almighty God. It blazes in the heavens on a daily basis as God's billboard to the nations of the earth. He's saying, this is my miracle working power of the God that created heaven and earth that you can serve. He is awesome. He is full of wonder. He is the light of the world. Sometimes we think of all the busyness we're going to do to help God try and do what he's doing. Listen, take a step back and let God do what God's trying to do. Just put your faith that when things get impossible, he's going to unlock the impossible. He's going to show up in his glory so that we could say all these years later, that was God that did that and not us. People get the idea it's easy for God to heal a head cold and he can't touch cancer. Let me tell you, cancer is not a challenge for God. When you have the faith for it, I mean, you can move mountains here. God's just waiting for you to uncross your fingers and start believing. He wants you to see that miracle. He wants to wow you. And when we stop expecting and we negotiate, we say, well, how God's going to do that? I don't know. But you know what, God? I'm fine. Our brain tends to look at what the devil's bringing and say, well, that might be working. You know, it's not what I thought it was going to be. It's not a wow, but it'll do. I'll settle in this situation. I'm just going to take what this compromise is. Remember this. If you remember anything out of today, God is not a God of compromise. He's going to bring a miracle into your life. Don't accept second best. We get knocked down here and there, and then people start telling you you can't pull it off. And, and our faith and that risk and that courage just seems to subside. And, and it's not right. It's, it, it's not good. That's not, that's not how we want to live. Why don't I believe like I used to? We're children of God. God is still God, not just when, he was, when we were little kids, but when we're 40, when we're 80. Just go, man, I, I'm going to go for it. God's done some amazing things throughout time. And as I grow in my knowledge, I want my courage and my boldness to grow with it, not, not the opposite. Our Father which art in heaven is still Jehovah Rufi, the Lord that heals all disease. His Son, Jesus Christ, is still the great physician. He is the balm of Gilead. He is the conqueror of death, hell, and the grave. This is the word of the living God. It is a two-edged sword. This is the bread of life. This is living water. This word spoken under the anointing of the Holy Spirit is a divine proclamation that can move mountains and conquer diseases. You are what this book says you are. You can do what this book says you can do. You can have what this book says you can have. You can 
know what this book says you can know. You can go where this book says you can go. Nothing is impossible unto you. If you go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this book says whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. And if that was the only verse in the Bible, it would make Christianity the greatest faith on the planet. Ask and you shall receive. Today I'm asking God that you receive the miracle that will turn your life around. 